Hello everyone, today I wanted to look at a couple of um, shear stress problems and to begin with let's look at problem, uh, the first problem that I picked, uh, 143. So it says if uh, P equals 5 kilonewtons, determine the average shear stress in the pins at A, B and C. All pins are in uh, double shear, this is really important, and each has a diameter of um, 18 uh, millimeters. So as you've seen on my previous videos, I always like by starting with uh, what is given. So we know that P is going to be 5 kilonewton. Uh, our um, pins are subject to double shear. And our diameter is going to be 18 millimeters. Okay, and then next let's, let's look at what we're asked to find. Okay, so it says find the um, shear stress at uh, A, B, and C. So A, shear stress at B, and shear stress at C. So as always, let's try to analyze this problem. Okay. And any any time you have a um, mechanics of materials um, problem, you always need to do your statics. So let's figure out what our um, forces, what our reaction forces are going to be in this uh, in this diagram right here. So we know that we're going to have a force uh, CB pushing upwards and then we're given the triangle 3, 4, 5. So we'll call this force CB. And then we have everything else labeled. We know we're going to have a force AY going upwards and then we're going to have a force on the AX direction. So I'd like to find what my AY is, AX, and um, also the FCB. So let's start by summing moments at point A. Okay, and that has to be, of course, zero to statics problems. So AY and AX are not going to contribute uh, to any moment in there because they're directly on that point. But we know that P is going to be, but P is distributed in uh, several different lo uh, locations. So the first one, we have P uh, times a distance of 0 0.5 meters, plus we have uh, 6P times a distance of 2 meters, plus we have 3P and then the distance is going to be 2, 4 meters and then also we're going to have P again times a distance of um, 4 and then it's going to be 5.5 meters Okay. and since this is going downwards it's going to cause the beam to rotate counterclockwise which is going to give us a positive moment using the right hand rule now we're going to have a look at force FCB uh, so the only one that is going to contribute to, uh, the only um, component of FCB that is going to contribute in moment is going to be the one in the X direction because the one, in, sorry, the one in the Y direction because the one in the X direction that is going to go parallel to point A which means that it's not going to contribute any moment because the perpendicular distance is going to be zero. So F, uh, FCB, the uh, X component of that is going to be three-fifths of FCB. FCB in the X is going to be that because of the ratio. And we know that that is going to be counterclockwise so um, let's do plus minus three-fifths FCB and that has to equal to zero and um, it looks like those are all the forces that we're going to uh, look into. 
So let's go ahead and um, find what FCB is going to be. So um, if we bring FCB on the other side, we're going to have 3 fifths FCB. And let's go ahead and substitute or uh, substitute all of our um, uh, ver uh, variables, so all the P's and plug in 5 kN for uh, each and every one of them. So we have 5 times 0 0.5, we have uh, 6 times 5, that's going to be uh, 30 times 2, uh, 3 times 5, that's going to be 15 times 4, and then plus 5 times 5.5, and let's go ahead and plug that into the um, calculator. We have 2.5 plus 60 plus 15 times 4, that's going to be 60, plus 5 times 5.5. Be 150 kilonewtons per meter. Okay. Oh, and the other thing that we forgot up here is that we're going to have to multiply this by the distance, which is going to be uh, 6. So this indeed is going to have a 6 in front. So the distance of uh, uh, FCB in the X direction, 2.A, is going to be 6 meters. That is given by just adding up all those distances. So 6 times 3, that is 18 fifths FCB. And then solving for FCB, we are going to get... Uh, we have 150 times 5 divided by... 18 we get uh, 41.67 41.67 kilonewton okay so now that we have FCB let's go ahead and sum forces in the uh, X direction forces in the X they have to add up to zero we're going to have uh, AX. So let's call to the left positive and to the right negative, which is uh, counterintuitive sometimes, but let's just go with that. And then um, we, we know that we're going to have um, a, um, we're going to have FCB contribute into the horizontal forces by uh, four fifths of that. So it's going to be four fifths of F. C, B, and those are the only two forces that are going to contribute in the x direction, so that has to equal to zero, therefore AX is going to be equal to four fifths FCB, and then by substituting in for FCB, AX is going to be times four divided by five, thirty-three point three kilonewtons okay now we also have um, AX and let's go ahead and calculate uh, AY so that we can do by uh, simply uh, summing forces in the Y direction and that has to equal to zero because it's a statics problem and uh, we're gonna have all those uh, P forces going downwards so um, let's call AY positive because it's going uh, upwards minus we have P minus 3P minus 6P minus P and um, we have plus uh, 3 fifths FCB that has to equal zero. So of course we can combine those together and we're going to have 911p so we have ay minus 11p plus 3 fifths fcb and that has to equal 0. So we know p and we know fcb so we can solve for y simple enough ay is going to be 11p minus the fifths FCB 
and by substituting in let's see what we get so we got uh, 11 times 5 that is 55 and then we have minus 3 divided by 5 times our FCB which is going to give us 30 kilonewtons okay so now we have all the reaction forces and now we can get into the um, into uh, determining the uh, average shear stress which is what we're asking the problem so remember stress uh, sorry uh, shear stress is going to equal to uh, force the parallel force to the area force over area so it's basically pressure stress is uh, the same thing as pressure but uh, the shear stress is uh, the force parallel to that area as opposed to perpendicular to that area so in other words to find the um, to, to find the shear at point A we're gonna have to find the uh, magnitude of the resultant force at A because we have one uh, shear that is one uh, force that is going on the y direction one force that's going in the x direction and they're both going to contribute to the shear because they're both uh, parallel to the surface uh, area to the cross-sectional surface area of the pin at A so uh, the uh, resultant force at A let's call that RA is going to be square root of uh, AX squared plus AY squared so RA is going to be uh, square root of 33.3 kilonewtons squared plus A Y is thirty kilonewtons squared, and let's see what we get for R A. So second square root of thirty three squared plus thirty squared, which is just nine hundred. That is going to be 44.85. So 44.8 should be good enough. 44.8 kilonewtons. Okay. So we also know that this is a double shear. So it means we're going to have shear on both sides of the pin. Therefore, we're going to have, uh, let's think of it as two areas. We're going to have one in the front, one in the back. So our shear at A is going to be our resultant at A over two area. So we have resultant at A, which is 44.8. And then we also have the area 2 times 1 fourth times uh, pi times diameter squared and of course we'll give them the diameter which is 18 millimeters but uh, the um, the force this is in kilonewtons so let's go ahead and convert that to uh, newtons so times 1000 okay and then the shear at A once we plug all the numbers in, is going to be, um, let me see. So we have that times 1000. And we're going to divide by 2 pi times 18 divided by 4. So we have 2 pi times, oops, it's 18 squared, so divided by 2 pi times 18 squared divided by 4, 
that gives us 88.1 megapascals. Because remember, uh, if you have newtons over millimeters squared, that's the same as uh, one newton per millimeter squared is the same as one megapascal. And we uh, usually like to write it in uh, megapascals. Okay. Now we still have to find the shear at point uh, B and the shear at point C. But if you look, point uh, the pin at C and the pin at uh, B, they're subject to the same force, to force uh, um, uh, FCB. So therefore, uh, the shear at uh, pin C and pin B are going to be the same. So let's go ahead and write that down. Shear at point B equals the same as shear at point C. And it's still going to be a double shear. That means that we have two area. And then we have our force FCB. So when we go ahead and substitute it, substitute in our FCB we already calculated that to be 41.67 41.67 but remember we have to convert it to uh, Newton in order to get our megapascal units and then our area is going to be still the same 2 uh, times 1 fourth pi times diameter squared diameter is given to be 18. Therefore, we're going to have, let's see what that is going to equal to, minus 1000 divided by 2, which is 2 pi times 18 squared divided by 4. Okay, we got um, 81.9. So we get 81.9 megapascals. Okay. Oh, and um, that is not the force FCB. is the shear B and C, which is going to be the same. Alrighty, uh, this video is already longer than I intended it to be, so I am going to do the second problem on a separate video. So thank you very much for watching and let me know if I can clar clarify even further. Thank you.